Maybe for me it's Beethoven's reverence for nature um, that I hear in every piece of music he writes. And the third movement of this is no exception. You know, for me, this is after the first introduction, just two measures of introdu introducing this idea of um, upper neighbors and leading tones. Suddenly we have the most beautiful hymn. You know, it's, I can just see him walking outdoors in a cathedral of trees, you know, and just feeling the power and the spirituality of nature in this moment. It's so heartfelt, it's so intimate, and that's what I try to capture, is that he even writes mezza voce, which, which means, you know, a covered voice. You're not supposed to sing full out. It's supposed to be inner, uh, inward. It's supposed to be inward. And this prayer alternates with a, a more lilting andante section, and back and forth, and back and forth. And it's this sense of, I think, almost rocking. You know, that, that comfort and that beauty that we feel when we're connected to nature. For me, I guess this is shows Beethoven's absolute genius in varying an idea so that him he adds different dimensions to he keeps varying it it's never the same Beethoven rarely does the same thing twice you know he's already he's already bored he's moving on and so as listeners we're always surprised and you say oh I didn't know that could happen oh I oh look at that you know so it's this constant until finally we suddenly have the brass come in and we go to a completely different key um, harmonically unexpected, but then we go back. So Beethoven is still reminding us that there are unexpected things in our future. But for me, this is a movement I think about, in a way it's the emotional apex um, to me of the, the entire piece, because this is Beethoven at his most, um, most intimate, really whispering to us as listeners. You know, this is the beauty of life. Look at this leaf. Look at this stream. Look at this blade of grass. You know, you have to also, I think, remember that the one thing that Beethoven needed was to be able to hear, and that's the one thing he couldn't do. And so our, our compassion for this person uh, has to go up exponentially. I mean, can you imagine? So he's hearing everything in his inner ear. He can't actually ever play. He can't ever experience his music. So it draws us into his world, which is so amazing, and particularly the one that he can't hear. And then the, the third movement ends, you know, and it ends a few times. Beethoven loves to do that. He likes to end, particularly slow moments, several times. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and then a loud chord. You know, it's sort of like, I think it's when you're with someone you don't want to leave, and you keep saying, oh, but oh, I forgot to tell you, oh, oh, just one more goodbye. It's To me, that's what this movement ends like.